Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your time. Today, I'm going to answer a question from JJ Dog, who suggested or asked, requested, either way, a video as to why you need to acclimate your Phalaenopsis. This does not just apply to the complex hybrid Phalaenopsis. We are very, very quick to be acclimating any orchids that we get in the mail. So I'm going to leave that out of it. This is going to address the Phalaenopsis that we just pick up at the nursery, big box store, DIY, supermarket, wherever, and you're getting it locally and you're taking it home. And it is from that perspective that I want to talk about why it is necessary to acclimate your Phalaenopsis. So let's break down the obvious. Your new fowl grew up all pampered and spoiled in this huge airy facility that had the perfect light, perfect temperature, humidity, airflow, perfect fertilizer cocktail, and possibly the perfect hormone ratio to boot. All these influences made it a very happy fowl and it grew relatively quickly to the point of spiking and budding out. Now, imagine that was you. Your life is amazing. You are thriving in your environment. You are growing and you're blossoming. You're doing really well. You're feeling great and strong and healthy. And then suddenly something happens that throws a wrench into your life. You get ripped out of that life by some force of nature. Nothing that you've done wrong. Something happens and inadvertently you get shoved into a corner. In a huge crowd, you are contained with hardly any room to breathe. Your system is on overdrive because suddenly you don't even have access to any form of nutrition, light, fresh air, fresh water, and you are in complete and utter darkness. And for how long? We have no idea how long a fowl is cooped up in these conditions while it is being taken out of where it was nurtured to when it gets to see some form of light. Let's stick with the perspective of the Phalaenopsis. Then, imagine it were you being rolled around on a massive conveyor belt with many others of your kind, and you have a lot number plastered on your trolley, and there are people bidding to get the lots. This is your first bit of light you've seen in how many days? But you're being jostled around and all cramped up, and the plastic around you is making breathing even harder. The relief is brief when you get wheeled outside to be loaded into a truck or an aircraft. But fresh air at last, phew, at least something. However, the time of year may be wrong and for a moment it is freezing cold until it is your turn to be loaded in the truck. The plastic covering is not providing any barrier to facilitate a little warmth or in reverse, it is swelteringly hot behind the plastic cover because it just so happens to be the warmer time of year. One thing though, if this is to be considered a good thing, at least it is warm enough outside, all that plastic will produce some form of condensation and finally you have some humidity and some water in your pot. The first water in how many days? You may have lost track because when it's dark, there is no sense of time, but at least some water was created for you to draw on. But no, no way. Now you're back in the dark. Also, for how long? If all goes well, it could be two days, maximum one week, perhaps. But what if there is a problem with the logistics while you're in these extreme conditions? It could be longer. Meanwhile, the perfect lifestyle you have been ripped from, all the good nutrients are still in your system so you cannot help but do what you were grown to do. You start opening your buds, but you are really not in any position to be doing all that. So you tap into your reserves because you have been trained to bloom. The energy that this takes with nothing to help you out is draining. And on top of that, you are already completely stressed out from what you've already been through. And you have no idea when your ordeal is over. But it just so happens suddenly after being in complete darkness, boom, bright light again out of nowhere. Yikes, your stomata were open for far too long. There was no gentle sunrise to signal that it is okay now. You can close them and bam, you are smacked with bright light. Rudely jostled from where you were at in whatever form of transportation into another vehicle. And this one is even smaller and dang, now it's dark again. The confusion is real. You have your blooms and buds to think about, your stomata open again. 
There is no rhyme or reason to what you naturally do if you had proper steady hours of light within a time frame that you used to have. Your system is on overload. The effort and stress is real, but you're putting on a brave face and you still look beautiful. Eventually, that smaller vehicle stops and finally you are blessed with some fresh air and light again. Your travel companions are also starting to open their buds and now it is even more crowded, like really crowded on your rack. But fresh air, oh, that feels so good. Even though you're totally frazzled from within, no one can tell. You are a real trooper for looking so beautiful after all you have been through. My kudos to you. And wow, conditions look to be improving. Bright shade, yay. The plastic is coming off, woohoo. And space. You can see your travel companions from across where you are placed and everybody breathes a sigh of relief. This is great. This is the best it has been since you've left your original home. This feels familiar and someone is actually coming around with some water. Oh, thank goodness by now you are over thirsty. You are parched, but yikes, that water is cold. What the beep? It's too cold. You're not used to such cold water and gross. After not having had any water for goodness knows how long, you absorb just about all of it as fast as you can, but realize too late that it's gross. It's too hard. You're not used to it. And where is that cocktail that you grew up with? This stuff is horrible, but it's too late. You already took a huge gulp of it and now it is in your system. Ugh. And then it's day two or three in your new location and they keep giving you more of this gross water enough already. Not only do you not like the water, but now you feel like you are drowning and you wouldn't be wrong thinking that because you are. Meanwhile, more of your buds open, your energy levels are really low and there are people strange to you, scrutinizing you, touching you. It's just all too much to ask. Looking pretty with all this going on, is there anything else that is needed from you while you are struggling just to cope with what you're being asked to do? But at least you're not dealing with pests as some of your travel companions appear to be having to deal with. Poor guys, they must be even more stressed out, you think. And then, whoa, you're on the move again. While thinking of your travel companions and the fact that they have pests and you are lucky that you don't, you are suddenly being jostled around on something that could be a basket, in a hand, a shopping cart. Oh no, not again. What now? Yuck, that was a draft. Oh, I don't like drafts, you say. Oh, now you're in direct sun. Oh, but phew, only for a moment. And you're thinking all the time, can people please make up their minds? I am not used to it. This is not how I grew up. And then, oh wow, we're doing this again? small vehicle, but it's not dark. That's positive. And then you find yourself in a somewhat nice place. The air is fresh. You have light. It's not overbearing. It's pleasant. And maybe, just maybe, you're now safe. More water? No, no more water, please. But wait, this water is nicer. Still, you can't take more water, but you have hope. The water being nicer and there seems to be some nutrients in them. You have hope that things may be on the up and up. You cross your roots that this may in actual fact now be the case and things are gonna look much better from here on in. It's your first night in this different place. Seems to be a nicer place. It's not such a loud place. And you open your somata when night falls, hoping that your stressful ordeal is now well and truly over. And then you wake up like a normal phalaenopsis would, like you used to in the past, and it's daylight. And but wow, what's going on now? Suddenly you're being ripped out of your pot. Your roots already being so sensitive are being handled. You have blooms and buds, etc. Oh my goodness, what is going on? For real? Now this? It hasn't even been 24 hours and now this on top of everything else. It's the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, for real. If you weren't already fighting for survival, this last intervention, this last interference, it takes the cake. Your stress levels are now really off the charts and you may consider dumping some buds because this is too much. You have to think long term. Blooming out may not be a wise choice. 
When will your ordeal be over, you ask? Well, even if you survive this after you already have weak roots, now they were interfered with. And what is that stuff around them now, anyway? Sure, it would feel really nice because it's all clean. And yes, it would feel really nice if you could just have the energy left to enjoy the moment. Instead, your stress levels have now well and truly been tested and your road to recovery is going to take forever. Oh, you wonder, a year, maybe two? Maybe I won't come back from this? Oh, that depends on so many factors. Does your new location know what you need so that you can get your strength back? You can only do your best and hope that when you signal your stress levels, that your new home not only sees them, but understands them and will help you survive them. Meanwhile, you are probably screaming Someone take my spikes off. I can't do this. I won't live if you insist on keeping my spikes on. Do you know what I have been through? Don't get me wrong. I am happy to be here. Happy to make you happy with my blooms. But for now, can I just get my bearings, please? Thank you. That is from the perspective of a phalaenopsis coming new into your collection. This little story putting you into the position of your phalaenopsis is why we have to allow them time to acclimate to our environment. And just because we drove them from the place of purchase to our home, which isn't always a great distance, what went on before is why we now need to allow our newcomers to acclimate for as long as possible. Leave them be, treat them with kindness, work with the media in the pot that it came with for as long as possible and allow your fowl to recover, to find its groove and only repot when the time is right. For example, you have temperatures that are steady day as well as night. These fowls are warm growers, steady temperatures, proper day and night cycles, etc. That is the right timing to then get into your fowl. And please don't think that you're going to do your fowl any favors because the media has broken down or gone acidic. And if you get in there soon enough, that you will be able to save the roots. More often than not, you will not be able to save the roots because they were already on their way out by the time they hit the garden center or even the grocery store, wherever you bought it. And then they got a hit with some water that they weren't used to at the wrong temperature. And I am going to throw in there possibly ice cubes. Your orchid is already on the way out by the time you bring it home. My little story putting you into the position of the fowl from when it leaves its perfect environment where it was grown to size to bloom to sell. I hope I could put you into the position of the phalaenopsis so that you can understand the stress levels it's dealing with until it reaches your home. Let your fowl settle in. You have a perfect reason you can enjoy the blooms. If you are like me in the early, early days and you needed to get into the orchids to clean up the roots, get the media out and establish them into your media, I understand that. I've been there, I've done that and sometimes Sometimes things worked out and sometimes they didn't. It has become much, much easier for me to leave my complex hybrid phalaenopsis alone when I brought them in new. When I put myself into their position, trying to think of what they went through before they came into my home. And then I just thought, no, welcome home. This is your home. You're going to be treated right from here on in. Trust that. And don't worry, I'm not going to mess around with you for the coming months because you and me, we need to get to know each other and I need you to trust me that I mean well. This was a little bit unconventional, but I hope that it gave you a perspective of where I'm coming from and where your fowl is coming from and what it's been through. Let it acclimate to your environment. Enjoy the blooms and then for many, many years to come, enjoy your phalaenopsis. J-Dog, thank you very much for this question, this request. I appreciate it. Thank you everybody so much for watching, for listening. I wish you a very beautiful day. On one condition though, that you do stay safe. And I'm just gonna add that little extra. Take care, bye.